So the next book I'm going to review for you is The Wolf Brother by Michelle Paver. This is a really lovely book, actually. Um, before I start, I'm going to read the blurb at the back because it's brilliant. A boy, a wolf, a legend for all time. Torek is alone, wounded, terrified and in the, on the run. His father lies dead, slaughtered by a demon bear. His only ally is an orphaned wolf club, cub. <clears throat> Sorry, I haven't got my glasses on. Um, really like this. So, Tarek's mom is already dead, so he's raised by his father. But obviously, very early on in the book, as you've just read, his father dies. So, he is in a whole heap of adventure and having to deal with his situation. And I've got to think how I review this for you without giving too much away. So he has a wound on his arm, which is important. And he's wandering around, he's starving and he needs food. And he has to, he, he, his dad gave him lots of information and told him what to do and what have you. And he doesn't actually always remember this and do this. So he's really hungry and he's traveling around. And he's scared that the same thing that took him may come and take him and try not to give it away for you so he comes across a wolf cub that he intends to kill but then it turns out that he becomes friends with this wolf cub and he can talk to wolves and everything just changes and i love this because i'm an animal communicator talk to my animals love my husky who i see as a wolf so I really like stories like this because it just allows me to just go into my imagination and enjoy it more. I really like this book. So then he, this is prehistoric fantasy. Uh, sorry, so historic fantasy set in Eurasia. And he comes across this clan who think he's quite weird. And this wolf friend, they're not happy with. So they plan to kill him. Um, but before they kill him, they realise that actually he might have something here and he's part of a prophecy. And then things start to change and um, then it starts to get a little bit more interesting. So then you have like clan rivalry and then you have... Um, oh, Livy, what's it called again? Magecraft. Magecraft, yeah. Magecraft, which is what they call witchcraft, which I can never remember because it's like, why don't you just call it witchcraft? But I love that you got a new version for it. I just can't remember it. Um, and it just gets really interesting and complex. And they bring in demons. Uh, so what was the other thing they brought in? Demons and... and superstitions that surround them. Superstitions that surround them. Which is fine. I'm used to that sort of thing. Stop kicking the camera and spirituality um demons and all that it, get, it gets really deep and interesting and it's hard to explain how it works because i don't want to give it away so what i'm going to do next is just read you an extract from it because it it really is fascinating and i love this book and i think that Michelle Paver has done a beautiful job of pulling something very unusual together to create this storyline. So if you want to hang on, I'm going to read you an extract next. Okay, so this is an extract and this is from, it's on page 66, can't remember what chapter it is now, give me a second. It's quite early on in the book and it is chapter 8. So, enjoy. About a moon ago it came, Wren went on quietly. Like a shadow it darkened the forest, killing wantonly, even killing other hunters. Wolves? A lynx? It was as if, as if it was searching for something. A runner for the, from the boar clan tracked itself. We thought it had gone. We gave thanks to our clan guardian. She swallowed. Now it's back. Yesterday our scouts returned from the west. They'd found many kills right down to the sea. The whale clan told them that three days ago it took a child. Torak licked his lips. What's this got to do with me? 
There's a prophecy in our clan, said Wren, as if he hadn't spoken. A shadow attacks the forest. None can stand against it. She broke off, frowning. The mage took up her words. Then comes the listener. He fights with air and speaks with silence. Her gaze fell on the whistle in Wren's hand. Everyone was silent, watching Torak. I'm not your listener, he said. We think you might be, replied the mage. Torak thought about the prophecy. The listener fights with air. He had gone. He had done just that. He had used steam. What happens to him? He asked in a low voice. What happens to the listener in the prophecy? But he had a terrible feeling that he already knew. The silence in the clearing grew more intense. Torek looked from the frightened faces around him to the flint knife at Oslak's belt. He looked at the glistening carcass of the boar hanging from the tree as its dark blood trickling into the pale beneath. He felt Finn Kedin's eyes on him and turned to face the burning blue gaze. The listener, quoted Finn Kedin, gives his heart's blood to the mountain and the shadow is crushed. His heart's blood. Under the tree, the blood drips softly into the basin. Drip, 